Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if strong Naruto and Hinata show their true self, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description, so let's begin the story. Team 7 and various other teams that managed to pass the first part of the exam, were all standing in front of the gates of training ground 44. It was a huge forest surrounded by a high metallic fence with multiple signs warning people not to enter. It was called the Forest of Death. According to the examiner Mitarashi Anko, this was where the second part of the exam would be held. It was a very dangerous place, filled with hordes of flora and fauna. After receiving the needed instructions, each team was given a heaven or an earth scroll. Their objective was to take the opposite scroll from the other teams by any means necessary. Then they would have to bring both scrolls to the tower, which was located in the center of the forest, if they wanted to head to the next round. After each team received the scroll they were all given an hour to get ready before they would enter the forest for five days. Team 7 had been given a heaven scroll which was now in possession of Sasuke, he was currently trying to ignore his other teammate Sakura, who was desperately trying to get him to agree on going on a date with her. Their blonde team member on the other hand was further away stretching under a tree. Naruto was just finishing his little warming up when he was approached by his former classmate Hinata Yuhi. She was once a member and heir of Konoha's most powerful clan, the Hyuga. A clan famous for their all-seeing called by Akigen. Unfortunately she was disowned by her father when she was just six years old, because he deemed her weak, too soft and failure, who didn't deserve the position as clan heiress. She was actually a very kind-hearted girl that even after her banishment, didn't hold a grudge against her father or clan. Even if they view her as a weakling and failure. Gurana Yuuhi, she was the woman who immediately took Hinata in after she was kicked out. Said woman had always been like a mother to Hinata, ever since her biological one died giving birth to her sister. Kurenai, who was also Hinata's sensei, was glad that Hinata wasn't a member of the Hyuga clan anymore. She found the clan's high and mighty attitude, and the way they viewed themselves better than anyone, that wasn't a Hyuga's just despicable. Hinata clearly didn't fit there because she was the exact opposite, she unlike them, treated everyone as an equal, and didn't look down on anybody. Kurenai guessed she got her kind heart and caring side from her mother. Hinata stopped in front of the blonde. Naruto Kundachi she stuttered. Said boy turned to face her. Hey Hinata-chan, how are you he asked, grinning. I'm fine and you she asked back. Her cheeks turned pink. Great, I'm set and ready for the exam he exclaimed excitedly, pumping his fist in the air. What about you? I think I am dot she faintly stuttered a reply. She reached into her jacket pocket and held out a small container in front of him. I wanted to give you this. Naruto took the small container and studied it with squinted eyes. Uh, thank you Hinata-chan. But what is it? It's a healing ointment, and it will help heal your wound very quickly. Dot she explained with more confidence, still blushing. Naruto smiled at her. Thanks, Hinata Chan, I think I'm definitely going to need it. Hinata's face turned scarlet. The present suddenly came up from behind Naruto and took him in a headlock. How is my little one and his wife doing? The female examiner grinning and started pinching the blonde's cheek. Anko Nichin let go of me. Dot he growled while struggling to get free. That's Anko sensei to you, we're not at home. Gaki Dot she said, sternly releasing the blonde. I wish you were Dottie muttered under his breath, rubbing his now red cheek. What was that Anko asked, cracking her knuckles as she had one of those scary looks in her eyes. Nothing, forget I said anything Naruto quickly answered, waving his hands in front of him. Hmm, I thought so she mumbled. Anada just shook her head at both their behavior. Do you two always have to fight she asked, crossing her arms. She sighed. They have been living with each other for eight years now, and they still fight Dot she thought. It's how we show that we love each other. Anko grinned, pulling the blonde ear. When Naruto was kicked out of the orphanage at the age of four without a reason. He was found by Anko Midarashi two days later sleeping in an alley, while she was making her way through the village. Because she knew what burden he carried that led to him being treated badly, she requested the Hokage to adopt him. From personal experience she knew how it felt like to be looked down on and hated for something that wasn't your fault. And after seeing the situation Naruto was living in, she immediately made her decision. He wouldn't be living the same lonely life she had lived. Naruto was happy when he learned that Anko wanted to adopt him, someone other than the Hokage actually cared about him. Moving in with Anko was the happiest day in his life because he finally had some he could call family. And with Anko being Kurenai's best friend, he was also introduced to Hinata when Kurenai took her in. So how are my two favorite actors, doing the snake mistress asked. Well if what you're implying is, if people still think I'm a loudmouth dope, then yes, my cover is still intact. Naruto answered with a shrug. And what about you Hinata-chan? Dadi asked, turning to Kinoichi. No one suspects a thing she answered smiling. That's good. Dot Anko said with a satisfied look. So when are you guys going to drop those ridiculous masks she inquired wondering when they would stop fooling everyone by acting shy or loud. Both gazed at each other before Naruto shrugged. 
Who knows, maybe during this part of the exam. Naruto answered. Hinata nodded. Well, the sooner the better, cause I'm really starting to believe that you both truly are spineless or an idiot. The snake mistress said, looking from Hinata to Naruto. She received two heated glares from both Genin when Hinata started to smile. Hair to repeat that Anko chan. Hinata asked with a sweet voice that made Naruto shiver. Anko raised her hands up in defense, hey I'm just saying. She spoke slightly terrified. Hinata could really be scary sometimes. She glanced at her watch and immediately her face turned serious. It's almost time to start the second part of the exam, so you two should head back to your own team. She told them. Both nodded and turned to her. See you later, Hinata chan, and good luck. Naruto grinned before they parted ways. Same to you, Naruto kun. She replied with a smile. Hinata made it back to her own team and went to stand next to her insect using teammate, Shino Aburam. Boy, Hinata, where have you been? Her other teammate, Kiba and Yuzaka, asked curiously. Hinata blushed and started twirling with her fingers. I went to see Naruto kun. She stuttered. Her shy mask was in place again. What do you see in him? Hinata the dog boy asked with a hint of jealousy. Hinata's blush increased. Well he's nice, he never treats people badly, and he's strong. She answered smiling while she thought about the blonde. Well I can agree with you on the first two. But I am stronger than him. Kiba stated proudly, his dog Akamaru barking in agreement. If only you knew the truth. Hinata thought about looking the other way. If I were you I wouldn't underestimate Naruto, Kiba, cause my bugs, and I can sense tremendous power radiating from him. Shino said without a hint of emotion in his voice. Too much power actually, for someone his age. What are you hiding Naruto Uzumaki his eyes focused the blonde that stood further away with his team. Kiba huffed and crossed his arms. Well, I don't know about that but he didn't get to finish as the examiner called all the teams. All the teams stood in front of Anko again. Alright maggots it's time to start the second part of the exam. She announced. Every team picks out a gate, from which point you all will enter the forest and start hunting for the scroll that you need. She shouted over the crowd. Everyone nodded and walked towards a gate of their own choice. And another piece of advice don't die. She told them and walked away. Way to make us feel better. A random shinobi muttered. Troublesome as certain lazy Genin muttered. Naruto and his team were standing in front of gate number 21. When do these gates open? He groaned. Naruto, stop whining, the proctor told us to wait. Sakura said, annoyed. Sasuke scoffed and turned his attention to the forest in front of them. Idiots he muttered. Naruto caught it and yelled, what was that team? HN the raven haired Genin. Naruto. Stop pestering Sasuke kun. Sakura shrieked. Naruto winced at her loudness. Sometimes I wish she would just shut up. He thought. Okay people they heard Anko's voice echo all around. The second part of the exam will start on 3 2 1. The gates shot open and every participant instantly dashed into the forest of death. Team 7 was making their way through the forest when Naruto suddenly stopped and started hopping from one leg to the other. What is it now Sakura asked, annoyed. I need to pee. Dot yelled back running into the bushes. Sasuke grunted and started to scan their surroundings, noting that the forest was so dense it barely let any light through. After a minute or so they heard a rustle in the bushes before the unconscious body of an Omegakur ninja came flying out. He wore a strange looking breathing mask and had a cloth over his eyes with two holes for him to be able to see through. Sakura shrieked while Sasuke on instinct got in a fighting stance. The furious Naruto came stomping out of the bushes. Can you believe the nerve of this guy, trying to sneak up on someone while he's urinating he yelled walking up to the out cold ninja's body. HN Sasuke relaxed his stance. Naruto don't scare me, and Sasuke come like that. Sakura yelled and tried to punch the blonde, but he caught her fist. Sasuke raised an eyebrow. Sakura Naruto said in a calm tone. Never try to hit me again. He gave her a small glare that surprised Sakura completely. It was time to get serious. He let go of her fist and started searching the enemy ninja for the scroll without uttering a single word. Sakura moved step back slightly afraid of this new Naruto that stood up to her. Sasuke narrowed his eyes. What's up with him? He thought. Nothing Naruto sighed. Getting up here and hand through his spiky blonde hair. He must have left it with his teammates. Oido. Sasuke called. Naruto turned to face the Ichiha. What's it, team he asked. Definitely the dope, you can stop this serious act, you're scaring Sakura, not that I care or anything. Naruto frowned, why do you think this is all an act, can I never be serious? Dotty asked. Because it doesn't Sui look out Sasuke shouted, alarmed, grabbing Sakura and leaped back, avoiding a volley of kunai that rained down from the trees. Naruto used a replacement to escape. On one of the high branches stood two Omegakur ninjas dressed in a similar fashion as the one Naruto knocked out. Looks like his team came to rescue him. Naruto muttered stepping out from behind a bush. Hey. We came for our teammate. One of the two Omegakur ninjas yelled down to them. He had a cloth over his eyes showing only one lone eye. You mean him. Sasuke nudged the unconscious aim ninja with his foot. I don't really see the point in just handing him back to you. 
we could just kill him which will automatically disqualify both of you. He brought a kunai against the knockout game ninja's neck. You wouldn't dare. The second am ninja scowled. He had a cloth covering his eyes completely. Try me. Sasu challenged with a smirk. The two aim ninjas scowled at Sasuke. Or we can just trade your teammate back for the scroll you possess. Naruto offered. Trust me, that would make things much easier. Sakura was silent the whole time as she followed the interaction between the four. But just in case she was already holding one to a kunai, ready to defend herself. The two aim ninjas started chuckling which turned into laughter. Sasuke narrowed his eyes. Why are they laughing when their teammate's life is on the line? I the one eyed aimed in shouted, throwing a kunai with a tag attached to the back of Team 7. Noticing the tag Team 7 leaped back a great distance to avoid the explosion. But as the kunai dug into the ground nothing happened. The two rain ninjas landed on the forest floor next to their unconscious partner, laughing harder than they were before. But so funny Sasuke growled and a tick mark appeared on his forehead. One of the aim ninjas pointed at the kunai. It's fake. Sakura exclaimed, surprised noticing the exploding tag was a dot. Precisely, one of the oldest but still effective tricks in the books the foreign ninja sneered. Damn it, how could we have fallen for something that stupid? Sasu cursed mentally. Glancing at Naruto, he was surprised to see the blonde still with a cool look on his face, like he wasn't worried at all. What happened to him? Sakura was now trembling. She felt it again, the same fear and doubt she had before the start of the exam. Were they actually ready for this, she wasn't sure. But she didn't want to let her team down, mostly Sasuke, what would they think of her? Your village shinobi must really stink if you can fall for a simple trick like that. The aim ninja spat in disgust. Even you guys are pathetic, especially that pink haired one, just look at how she's shaking, she has to be the weakest link on the team. One insulted Sakura. They flinched at his harsh words. But she knew they were true, there was no denying that she was in fact the weakest of their team, even Sasuke had told her that. Naruto glared at the aim ninjas, he wasn't going to stand for any of this. Even if he didn't like Sakura and she didn't possess much skill next to what she learned in the academy, she was still his teammate. And he wouldn't allow anyone to humiliate the people he cared about. The Ichiha and the blonde can maybe put up a little fight. The foreign ninjas smirked. But even so you won't stand a chance against us. Sasuke shifted into his own fighting stance, while Sakura shakily raised her kunai. Naruto on the other hand reached for his jacket zipper and pulled it down, revealing his black undershirt with a red spiral. What is the dope Naruto blonde doing? They all thought. Naruto then placed his hands in a ram seal. Rimmit sh plus rukai, limiter seal release. He whispered. They all felt the blonde's chakra spike, they couldn't contain their surprise as they felt that the blonde's power had increased tremendously. Where did this power come from they all thought. Now that my full power is not sealed anymore Naruto got in a fighting stance and grinned, I will give you guys another chance, give up your scroll, and you can leave with your teammate uninjured, or I'll just beat it out of you. His glare on them intensified. Choose wisely. This power may have grown immensely, but we can't let that scare us. The one-eyed aim ninja thought. He whipped out a kunai and dashed towards the blonde, ignoring his teammate's call to wait. Closing in on Naruto he attempted to stab said boy only for him to duck and elbow the aim ninja in the gut that made him gasp for air. As he bent over clutching his stomach the blonde's chakra enhanced fist collided with his head. It ended with aim ninja flying into a tree and was also knocked out cold. Naruto turned the last name none left standing. I hope you're smarter than him, so what will it be he asked with a calm look on his face. The Omegakur ninja was terrified, he was the only one of his team left standing. He only had one option and reached into his pouch and tossed his team scroll towards the blonde. Naruto smiled as if it was an earth scroll, exactly what they needed. We could have avoided this from the start, now take your teammates and leave. He ordered strictly. The ninja complied, picking up both his teammates and left. Naruto sighed and turned to his teammates who were staring at him in disbelief. Ok guys now that we have the scroll we needed, let's head to the tower. He cheerfully acted like nothing just happened and started walking. Naruto. The blonde stopped in his path. This was one of the very rare times when Sasuke would actually call him by his name instead of the usual insults. Sasuke. The blonde said, looking over his shoulder at the raven. What was that all about, you act completely different. Ichiha asked. It's called a mask. Sasuke. He turned his head back forward. You should know a lot about that. He added and started walking again. Sakura was confused, but Sasuke had a surprised look on his face. The dope could see through his mask. How? He wondered as he and Sakura followed after the blonde. Hinoha's Forest of Death was one of the village's worst places to be in, be it for civilians or shinobi, if you didn't know how to survive in hazardous circumstances, you weren't coming out alive. That was because most of the creatures that resided behind the giant fence were abnormally bigger and were extremely dangerous. There was a reason that many signs were placed around the fence, warning everyone not to enter unless they had a death wish. 
And now with the second part of the exam being held in this exact same forest, the participants not only had to look out for the enemy ninjas, but also for these giant monsters. But teammate, the team had easily succeeded in getting the scroll that they needed. From the moment they had entered the forest they had planned to set up a trap. And had started to gather a large amount of unnaturally large leeches. Their plan was simple, they would set out and lure a team towards the location of their trap. The unsuspecting team would then get caught in a giant undetectable net. They would then release the creepy looking bloodsuckers onto the enemy team. Pretty easy and it worked without a hitch. They were currently on their way to the tower after having acquired the scroll of a team from the hidden mist, who were unfortunate to land in their trap. This part of the exam is too easy, all the teams here are a bunch of weaklings. Did you see how easy they fell for our trap? Kiba bragged smugly as they were now a mile away from the tower. That's because they never noticed a Kiba. Shino spoke in his usual tone that didn't hint at any emotions. If one of them had been a user or trap specialist, it wouldn't have gone so easy as you say. Kiba turned glaring at the bug user and scowled. He always has to make a smart comment. He thought. Yeah, but even then we could have won, you agree with me, don't you Hinata? He turned to his silent teammate who seemed to be deep in thought. Ah Hinata Kiba snapped his fingers in front of her face. She was immediately pulled out of her and blushing shyly. Oi Hinata what is with you today, you have been quiet ever since we've entered this forest. What's wrong he asked, concerned. Nothing Kibakun, I was just thinking of something. She answered softly. Thinking about something or someone that dope Kiba concluded. You were thinking about that Baka, Naruto again weren't you? Kiba fumed with jealousy. Kibashino warned. But the dog boy ignored him and continued. Really Hinata, I don't get why you even like that guy when he doesn't even give you the time of day. He's always walking behind Sakura-chan and doesn't even notice you. He pointed to himself. You could give someone like me a chance because I'm 10 times better than th he didn't get to finish, as Kiba found two fingers jabbed at his throat and his voice disappeared instantly. Shino pushed his glasses up his nose. Someone really has to make it clear to him that Hinata isn't that interested in him. For Hinata it was the last straw and that was saying a lot since that girl was always calm, collected and had a lot of patience. But Kiba really pushed it to the limit when he constantly bragged about how he was better than Naruto and when he insulted the blonde. Sure the loud and hyperactive act was just part of his mask which only a few people knew about. But still, it was sad and hurtful to hear and see how they constantly made fun of him, or how they treated him like trash. From the day he was born Naruto didn't have an easy life as he was kicked out of the orphanage when he was only 4 years old and he had to fend for himself from an early age. If people only knew the kind pain and the loneliness he felt inside. His life did get a little better after Anko took him in as her own family, but only by a little. He was Hinata's closest friend and was there for her when she was banished from her clan. The one who helped her get her confidence back and helped her grow stronger. That's why she wasn't going to stand by any longer when people treated the blonde badly. She was going to stop hiding and show people who she really was. The real Yuhi Hinata. And she would start with Kiba. Hinata glared heatedly at Kiba as she had two fingers pressed against the boy's throat, exactly where his vocal cords were located. Kiba she spoke in a dangerous tone, her voice laced with venom. Inuzaka shivered in his spot. This was the first time he had ever seen Hinata this way. Listen and listen wheel. If you ever and I mean ever say something bad or insulting about Naruto-kun again. I will make sure you regret it your whole life. Releasing a bit of killing intent to show how serious she was. Akamaru, who was hiding in Kiba's hood, started to whimper in fear. Shino didn't say anything as he watched from the sidelines as Kiba was put in his place. Said boy tried to say something, but no sound escaped his mouth. So she finally decided to stop acting, it's about time for Hinata. He thought smiling although it was unseen by them since his jacket covered the lower part of his face. Understand, Kibadot she growled. Pressing her fingers deeper against his throat, the Inuzuka rapidly nodded not wanting to test this new Hinata. But Hinata said with a nod. Now let's get going. Dot she removed her fingers from the boy's throat. Turning around she started walking. Shino walked up to Kiba who was rubbing his throat. What just happened, Hinata the scared Inuzaka asked, as he was able to speak again. The bug user placed a firm hand on Kiba's shoulder. Hinata stopped hiding who she really is. Dadi answered. What do you mean she stopped hiding? What was she hiding? Kiba questioned. Kiba was really clueless and a bad listener, Shino thought following his female teammate, you'll see was all the bug user said. Kiba stood there confused for a moment before he ran after his teammates. None of them were noticing the pair of slit eyes that were watching them from the shadows. Sasuke had to dodge another barrage of kunai that was thrown at him by a kinoichi from Kusagakur. Flipping up onto one of the higher branches he angled himself before launching himself towards his opponent. Forming quick seals he inhaled and spewed four small fireballs at the grass kinoichi who dodged them with great ease. As he landed he ducked under her incoming fist and engaged her into a tojutsu battle. 
As their fight went on Sasuke grew annoyed when he couldn't land a single hit on the Kusa woman who effortlessly kept blocking and dodging every one of his attacks. Sasuke had a feeling that this woman couldn't still be a genin, her skills seemed to surpass that of the average dot. He wished Naruto was here now, maybe together they would stand a chance against this woman. Unfortunately they got separated when the blonde tried to save Sakura from a huge snake that they encountered on their way to the tower. He was swallowed by the reptile after he pushed Sakura out of its way, and the snake had slithered away. But before they could go in pursuit of the snake, this unknown mysterious woman from Sunagakur had appeared, blocking their path. Sasu could only hope now that Naruto would somehow escape the snake, but knowing Naruto, he was almost certain the blonde would find a way. As they faced off against the woman, Sakura was knocked unconscious when the strange woman released a bit of killing intent. Sasuke was left to fight her alone. Is this the full extent of your power? Ichiha Sasuke the woman taunted as she sent a punch towards the boy's head. Sasuke immediately jumps backwards, putting some distance between the two of them. If so I must say that I'm really disappointed that such a weak ninja as you came from the once fearful and strong Ichiha clan. On the other hand maybe that's why they were killed so easily, because they were weak just like you. She laughed. Sasuke grew infuriated at this. How dare she make fun of his deceased family. Oh, she was going to pay. Whipping out three small windmill shurikens with near invincible wire attached to them, he threw them towards the Kanoichi. Using the wire Sasuke let the shuriken spin between trees. This is the Sharingan Sufusha Sanitachi, Sharingan Windmill Triple Blade. He's able to perform it so well at his age. The Kusanin thought smirking. Maybe he isn't a lost cause after all. Sasuke pulled on the wires and made the windmill shurikens embed themselves in the tree barks. The wires around the Kanoichi tightened and pulled her against the tree stump. A single wire leading back to Sasuke. Flashing through four quick hand seals, Sasuke thought. Katen. Ryuka no Jutsu, Fire Style. Dragon Flame Jutsu dot and breathed out a stream of fire that rapidly sped along the ninja wire that he held between his teeth. The Kanoichi screamed in pain and agony as she was burned by the flames. The fire was so strong that it blasted through the tree. Ending the attack Sasuke fell to his knees breathing heavily. I did it dot he panted. But I'm also out of chakra. He thought. The sound of metal wires breaking reached Sasuke's ear, his head shot, to see the Kanoichi removing said wires from her body. How he gasped with a stutter in disbelief. The Kusanin with her head down started chuckling. What is the matter with Sasuke-kun? You look like you've seen a ghost dot she said now speaking in a different voice. Raising her head up Sasuke gasped when he saw her face. Her face. The skin is falling off. He thought with his eyes wide with fear. Indeed the Kinoichi's skin had peeled showing an even paler skin tone underneath and a creepy yellow snake-like eye. Raising her hand she peeled off the rest of the skin, revealing the face of a man. The predatory grin he had on his features made Sasuke shiver. Who what are you? What do you want from me Sasuke was completely terrified of the person in front of him. My name is Arachimaru. Arachimaru replied, chuckling. Licking his lips he placed his hand in a strange seal that Sasuke didn't recognize. And what I want is you. As he finished that sentence his neck up as his head shot out toward Sasuke, and he bit the raven in his neck. The Ichiha could only scream in pain as Arachimaru's teeth sank into his skin. A strange tattoo with three commas appeared on Sasuke's neck. After the deed was done the snake man's head retracted back to his body. Sasuke clutched the spot on his neck where he was bitten, as immense pain surged through his body. What did you do to me he asked through his clenched teeth. Arachimaru chuckled and answered. I gave you a gift, use it well, and in time you will seek me out, and I why he didn't get to finish his sentence because of a sphere of air that forcefully knocked him back through a tree. The last thing Sasuke saw before falling unconscious were two identical, fear-looking blondes landing in front of him. So it was Orochimaru team who sent that snake after me. Naruto thought angrily when he landed in front of his teammate. His fury only increased when he noticed the mark that Sasuke now sported on his neck. It's the same as Anko Nichin. He clenched his fist. In his angered state he fed his eyes chakra which in turn changed his red eyes purple, and a ring appeared with four small MOONSC my profile for more details. He turned to his clone, sending him a nod. Said clone went to Sasuke and hoisted the boy onto his back, and then went to stand next to another clone that was holding an unconscious Akura. Now that he had gathered his teammates he calmed himself down and let his eyes fade back to their normal blue color. So you escaped my pet snake's attack. He heard a voice say behind. Naruto turned back, seeing that Orochimaru had already recovered from his attack and was now flexing his muscles and neck. I must congratulate you, that of yours took me by complete surprise, I didn't even sense you, arriving. Orochimaru said with a stoic expression. I'm flattered but I wanna know, why did you give Sasuke that curse, seal the blonde growled. Orochimaru raised an eyebrow. Normally I'd ask how you know about it, but I'm on a tight schedule and don't have time to play around with you. So I will have to finish you off here, since my snake summon failed to do so, and be on my way. He told Naruto. 
Raising his head up he opened his mouth. A snake rose out of his mouth and also opened its jaw, and just to have a sword rose out of it. So that's what Anko Nichin talked about. Naruto thought back. Orochimaru gripped the handle and removed the sword holding it at his side. Souvenir Naruto thought, grinning as his eyes started changing to purple again. What's this? I wasn't aware of Konoha gaining a new one. Orochimaru mused out loud. I wonder how it measures up to the Sharingan though. Naruto heard what the snake mumbled and his grin grew bigger. Reaching into his weapons pouch he removed a scroll. Orochimaru raised an eyebrow as he watched the blonde roll the scroll partly open, revealing it to have a storage seal engraved on it. Naruto turned his head back to his clones, guys, go I'll catch up soon. He told them. His clones understood and nodded back before leaping upwards, disappearing into the trees. Naruto sighed and turned this time glaring at the snake user. Now that we're alone, allow me to demonstrate one of the abilities that my Taigen, Solar Eye, grants me. Jiten. Kryoku, Magnet Release. Magnetic attraction. Dottie said while making a come here motion with his arm. Suddenly Orochimaru's was yanked out of his hands by an invincible force, surprising the dot the blade crossed the distance from Orochimaru to Naruto within seconds, and disappeared with a puff of smoke into the scroll Naruto held up. W. Orochimaru couldn't utter a single word as he was temporarily stunned, seeing his sword disappear in front of his eyes. Had Naruto smirked, making a mock bow before quickly rolling up the scroll and returning it to his pouch. Overcoming his shock in an instant Orochimaru grew furious. You insolent, pesky brat, return my blade back at once. Dottie yelled while lunging towards the blonde. Almost too easy. Naruto smirked, making three quick hand seals, taking a deep breath. Katen. Hasekashu, fire style. Combustion ash cloud he exhaled a giant cloud of super-headed ash. A snake user who was already in ran straight into his doom. Naruto smirked in victory when Orochimaru was caught in the ash cloud, got ya. He thought and clicked his teeth together creating a spark which ignited said cloud. The explosion that followed destroyed most of the surrounding trees. The force had sent a badly burned Orochimaru spiraling towards the ground where his body exploded in smoke, revealing a scorn log. He escaped, well it's expected of him. Naruto muttered to himself as he eyed the log and formed the bird seal. Chitonfton combi. Suzum no hikm, gravity wind release combination. Sparrow's flight he whispered. A second later the wind around him picked up and he shot upwards through the trees. Stopping high above the tree line, hovering in the air. In front of him also floating in the air were the clones that held his unconscious forms of teammates. So what happened to Hebe team, did you get him one of the replicas asked. The original shook his head. He escaped. Damn, and I thought that your attack would have finished him off. The same clone replied, dropping his head in disappointment. Don't be ridiculous, he's Orochimaru for crying out, loud. The second clone exclaimed and why dot at the level we're now we won't be able to take him on. He's too strong and far more experienced than us. He pointed out. Oh boy, here we go again. Naruto sighed. All I'm saying is that we could at least try. The first spoke again. Clone number two would have face palmed himself if he wasn't holding Sakura at the moment. Why do some of my clones even have different personalities? The original sweat dropped. Didn't I just say he's far out of our league? Clone number two almost yelled. This is going to go out of hand. What happened to clone number one began but was interrupted by the original. Guys am I the only one that finds it crazy that you are actually arguing with yourself one and two stared at each other, then looked at the real Naruto. You know we are part of you, right? Clone number two pointed out. And that means that you are actually crazy. Clone number one added grinning. Wise guy Naruto thought as his eyebrows twitched. If you weren't holding Sasuke at the moment I would have dispelled you the moment you made that comment. Naruto stated. The mentioned clone snorted. Yeah, yeah boss, let's just go before we run out of chakra and drop our teammates into the forest below. Finally he says something rational. Clone number two thought. Yeah, you're right, let's go. Naruto ordered and they started flying towards the tower. Meanwhile in the trees below Rachimaru stepped out from behind a tree, parts of his clothes were singed thanks to the explosion, but he seemed okay for the most part. Staring in the direction Naruto flew off too, he mused. Interesting, how Kanoha managed to hide something like this from me or my informants residing in this village, is beyond me. He said to no one in particular. Well I love to cut that brat open and study him I have to somehow manage to retrieve my blade from him. He growled at the thought of the blonde wielding his blade. But everything is on time he thought. His body slowly began sinking into the tree branch. I will have to seek out Kabuto-kun and inquire why this information on the blonde was left out. With that he disappeared. When Naruto and his clones landed in front of the tower they wasted no time and entered immediately. He had to find help for Sasuke because from the looks of it he was catching a fever. At that time Saku, Naruto Baka what are you doing when you are not supposed to open them she shrieked. When Singh at the Pinkett's voice volume he replied. Oh you're finally awake. Didn't you hear Baka, we're not supposed to open the scrolls until we reach the tower. She stomped towards her. Naruto gave a look that froze her in her path. 
Where do you think we are, Sakura? It was then that Sakura realized that they were in the forest. Oh she mumbled, feeling stupid for not noticing. Then she asked, where is Sasuke kun Naruto pointed back to where Sakura was laying down before. She saw Sasuke laying on the ground sweating heavily and twitching every now and then. If one were to look closely he would see a dark and vile chakra pulsing from the curse seal. That woman gave him some weird mark, and he has been having a fever ever since Dottie told her. He kept the rest of the information on Orochimaru hidden. Sasuke kun she yelled in concern and ran towards the raven. Checking his condition she turned to Naruto. We have to do something, he needs help. She exclaimed, worried. What do you think I was trying to do? He said almost irritated and turned his attention back to the scrolls. Unrolling them, he recognized the summoning, see Lun both and tossed them to the side. As they fell on top of each other, they bulged and started to emit smoke. The puff of smoke later Naruto's eyes widened as he saw the figure who appeared. It has been a while since Naruto kun. The figure spoke. The blonde never thought he would see this person again, or at least for a while. Yui stammered. Second day of the exam, the Forest of Death Tower. Anko, you know that it was pretty stupid of you to try and engage Urachimaru in battle, right? The third scolded the young woman. His glowing hand hovered over Anko's curse seal that was slowly spinning. Anko merely grunted in response, but had to bite her lip as the seal pulsed painfully. You have to remember that even if you're older, stronger, and much more skilled than before, he still is a, one of our biggest enemies, and still far out of your league. Here is inside. Sometimes I really wonder where I went wrong with you, Urachimaru. He thought sadly. Yeah, yeah Anko mumbled. Is she going to be okay? A concerned voice asked, reminding both adults that they weren't the only ones in the room. Across the room sat a concerned looking Hinata and Naruto who seemed to be deep in thought. She will be fine after I finish sealing the curse, Mark. Siratobi reassured giving her a smile. Hinata nodded, but what about Sasuke, Naruto-kun said that he also has one now. She glanced at the blonde who seemed to still be pondering over something. I have already informed Kakashi and he is coming later today and will take care of Sasuke. The third answered by lifting up his palm from the snake mistress's bare shoulder. Done, I suggest you rest for now, there are still three days left until the end of the exam, enough time to get back to your old self. He stated. Anko nodded and started wearing her trench coat. Hiruzen then took a chair and went to sit in front of the children. Congratulations to both of you for getting through the second part of the exam he said proudly. But actually I'm not surprised at all, you two are the strongest and most skilled graduates of your year, and you would have made sure that your team survived and passed the second part. He turned to Naruto. But now I want to know from you what actually happened in the forest of death, Naruto. said. Lon sighed and began telling them everything that occurred since their team entered the forest, him meeting Orochimaru and making it to the tower. Hinata, Anko and Hiruzen were all patiently listening as the blonde told them everything that happened. Wait you took Rachimaru's, are you crazy Anko almost yelled at Naruto and made an attempt to bump him on the head, but he dodged. Do you know you just put a giant target on your back, since he will do everything to get it back, even kill you she whispered, why Naruto Odo? I know, I know Anko Nichin, it was kind of stupid, but you told me that it was a very dangerous weapon, especially in the hands of someone like Rachimaru. So when the opportunity presented itself for me to take it away from him, I took that chance. Naruto explained looking straight at Anko. I can't lose you Naruto. She said, shaking her head. Naruto walked towards his sister and gave her a hug. I'm sorry. He told her as Anko returned the hug. I know, just don't do something so stupid and dangerous like that again. Baka. She smiled at the young dot. You know I can't promise that Anko ni. He told her, Anko sighed. I know brat. She said and ruffled his hair. Hiruzen smiled at the scene, he made the right choice letting Anko adopt Naruto eight years ago, as she clearly showed that she cared a lot for him and was very protective. Even more since that incident five years ago, it was one of the most traumatizing days for all three, especially those two. He switched gazes between Hinata and Naruto, the events of that day had changed both of them permanently. The old cage shook his head and tried to get that thought out of his head. But that's all in the past. Now what are you planning to do now he asked the blonde. Well I have an idea, but first I have to meet up with him, first dot Naruto turned to him and answered, handing the cage the scroll containing the blade. But could you give this to him first, so he could have a look at it. Dot the cage nodded and took the scroll. I advise you to watch your back, Orochimaru might come personally or send his people after you, thinking you still have his sword. Dot here is an advised. I will. Dot Naruto answered with a nod. Now that we got that out of the way, we will move on to a more pressing matter. Dot here is an said seriously, and pulled out a scroll and handed it to Anko. This is the latest report I received from your friends Hinata, Naruto, and it confirms our suspicions of last month. She took the scroll, unraveled it and started reading, frowning every now and then until her eyes widened and she slammed the scroll on the table in front of her angrily. What the heck are they thinking of betraying us like that she yelled furiously. What do they possibly hope to gain by joining side with that traitor? 
Tsuritobi stroked his beard and answered, I may have a theory as to why but he turned to the two youngsters in the room. Since none of you two said anything or made an attempt to see what is written in the scroll I take it, you already know of Suna's upcoming betrayal. They both gave the cage a nod, and Hinata said. Earlier today we ran into him and he pulled us aside and told us. Tsuritobi nodded and asked with a stern look, but which side is he on? Naruto answered, we asked him that and he said he. Flashback, you don't know. Naruto and Hinata said simultaneously. What do you mean you don't know Hinata asked the person in front of them. You have to see it from my perspective. Hinata I'm a ninja of Suna, and I have sworn loyalty to obey every order given. But I am against the idea of turning against your only ally. The person answered. Especially if you're going to join sides with a man who betrayed said ally of yours and will help him in destroying their village. Naruto and Hinata understood what he meant, every ninja was bound by a code of honor and had to follow the orders given to them by their cage, and disobeying it would count as treason that could lead to banishment or execution. Ninjas would then run away from their home village and become missing nin. We understand what you mean, so what are you going to do now Hinata asked. The person stared hard at both Konoha ninjas. I will have to fight and when I do I want to fight both of you, at least that way I don't go against the word of the Kazakiage, and I get to see how strong you two have become. Dottie answered. I will secretly take out a few shinobi from the sound to help Konoha, but when the time for our battle has come don't hold back on me, I know I want Dot and, but that he was gone. Naruto groaned as he ran a hand through his hair. I really wish we could have had this battle on a friendlier occasion like not in the middle of a possible war. Dottie sighed. I agree with you Naruto-kun, but you can't always choose your battles. Hanada said as she started walking off. Yeah, you're right the blonde replied and followed the lavender eye-colored beauty. Flashback end, I still don't like that guy's attitude, but I think we can trust him when the time comes. Anko mused out loud. So what now old man she asked with a grin. Tsuritobi's left eye twitched disrespectful as always he thought. We will have to cut this meeting short because I still have a lot of work and planning to do. Dottie said. Also I have to call a meeting with the shinobi council and inform the higher shinobi to inform them of the future events Dottie told them, and he turned to walk away but stopped at the door. Oh before I forget Naruto, Hinata, your mission ends here Dottie said with a smile and exited the room. Hinata sighed as the door closed. Finally she breathed out in relief and started massaging her neck. It was starting to get very tiresome. Dot she mumbled. You can say that again. Dot Naruto replied walking towards her. Oh come on, it wasn't that bad. It would be fun to do what you guys did thinking of the pranks you could pull. Dot Anko spoke cheerfully. The things you would do to the people is the reason why you weren't. Dot Naruto told her. Plus people are less likely to suspect us, and you know that Dot Anko could only pout while Hinata giggled at the young woman's antics. Anyway I'm hungry, let's get something to eat. Dot Anko suggested, both Jenin nodded in approval and started walking towards the door. Oi Hinata, how long are you going to stay looking like that the snake mistress asked as they left the room towards the tower's cafeteria. What was going on? She didn't know everything happened so fast, everything changed, he changed. Why? Ever since they entered the tower he hadn't said one word to her. They had checked Sasuke into the tower medical ward because he seemed to be coming down with a fever. Plus that strange tattoo on his neck was giving off this foul chakra. When they had a room assigned to them he had suddenly disappeared leaving her alone and she had not seen him the whole. The next day he still hadn't returned and she decided to go look for him, something she normally wouldn't do. She had searched for him for almost an hour when she spotted him in the cafeteria together with the proctor of the second exam and strangely Hinata. They were laughing and talking to each other like people who knew one another for a very long time. Which was odd since Hinata was always too shy to approach Naruto in and outside the academy. What was even more strange was that Naruto kept calling the proctor Nichan, Naruto never mentioned that he had a sister, she always thought he was an orphan. Now that she actually thought back she barely knew anything about her teammate. Only that he was an annoying loud mouth Raymond eating orange wearing blonde and that he had a crush on her. But ever since they had entered the forest of death he changed, he acted more mature and barely even talked. Not once had he gotten in an argument with Sasuke or even asked her on a date. She always found it annoying when he asked her out and she always wished that he would get the hint that she wasn't interested in him or anyone other than Sasuke. But why did the sudden lack of attention from him make her feel so down? Was it because Naruto showed her more attention than Sasuke ever did or would do? Wasn't this what she always wanted, that he would leave her alone? And here he was, in her eyes, practically flirting with Hinata. Wait, Hinata. Now that she looked at the girl something was different about her. Her hair, her eyes. Hinata's midnight blue hair was now longer and was tied in a high ponytail, and her once wide eyes were now light purple. Both had on different outfits, Hinata had on a lavender colored jacket with white trimmings on the side. It was zipped up halfway showing that underneath she wore a black tank top on top of a fishnet shirt. Also she had on black pants and blue sandals. 
When Sakura saw how Hinata looked she instantly grew jealous because the girl showed to have blossomed earlier than most girls their age. Naruto's new wardrobe consisted of baggy dark blue pants, blue sandals, and his ankle was wrapped with bandages. Lastly he had on a grey jacket that he had kept open showing his orange shirt underneath. Something strange was going on here. Sakura knew it and she was going to find out what. Still fuming over Hinata fortune she turned around and went back to her room. The five days were up and the second part of the exam had come to an end. And seven teams in total had made it to the tower, five teams from Konoha, among them the three rookie teams of that year, one team from Suna, and one team from the newly formed Atagakur. At the closing of the second exam, they had all gathered in a large hall that had two high balconies on opposite sides of each other, and a giant stone sculpture in the back of two hands performing the ram seal. The Hokage had appeared with the team's instructors to congratulate the teams that passed, and he started to explain to them the purpose as to why the exam was held. It was a way for the nations to test the strength of their warriors against each other. Then Enko dropped the bomb. Because there are so many teams that passed we will have to hold a preliminary round to cut your number in half. The snake mistress said. Some of the genin eyes widened, some groaned in frustration while others just stayed quiet. Vaikiba barked out a little ticked off. Because she began, giving him a slight glare. There will be guests coming from all over and everything has to happen within a time limit. So the less fight we have the sooner the exam ends. Everyone nodded in understanding, she continued. Each one of you will fight in a one-on-one -on -one match, and the winner moves on to the third and final round of the exam. She explained. Who you will fight will appear on that screen. She pointed to the top right corner of the statue, where she slid to the side revealing a giant monitor. But before we continue, is there anyone among you that wants to give up now? Anko asked scanning over the gathered genin. They all started to look at one another to see who would quit. That's when the silver-haired, glasses-wearing team from one of the Kanoha teams raised his hand. I give up. He stated. I'm too low on chakra to continue. He chuckled nervously. The Kanoha all narrowed their eyes at the boy, all sensed that he was clearly lying. Iryukushi Kabuto right said the proctor of the first exam, Marino Ibiki, checking a notepad. Kabuto nodded. You may go. All eyes followed Kabuto as he promptly left the room. Anko coughed to get their attention. Since all of you are planning to stay and fight, let's start with the first match. All heads turned to the giant screen, where names randomly started to appear until it stopped. Ichiha Sasuke vs. Akad Muroi. Well, both competitors stay down here and the rest of you can wait on the balcony for your turn. Finished Anko. Team 7, 8, and 10 plus team guy went to stand together with their sensei on the balconies. While the other team from Kanoha took place on the opposite balcony together with the team from Suna and Atagakur. Anko suddenly yelled. Why, hey, sit down here, it's your turn to host. Kanoha let out a snicker, the Hokage face palmed and slapped his forehead, while Kurinai sighed. The sickly looking down next to a grinning Anko, giving her a slight glare, she stuck her tongue out to him and left. He coughed and turned to the two competitors. My name is Jekko Hade, and I will be your proctor for this event. He said out loud, so that everyone heard him. First I would like to inform you of the rules, you only win if your opponent gets knocked out or gives up. When I tell you to stop and you ignore my orders you will be disqualified. I will also end battle if I deem your opponent unfit to fight. He explained while coughing. And more importantly killing is not allowed. Understand. Both Sasuke and Yoroi nodded. Hey eight then raised a hand up ready he asked, both opponents shifted into a fighting stance. Begin Dotty shouted and jumped back to create some distance between them. Up in the stands there was a tension between the four teams from Kanoha surrounding two people, almost all of them had the same thing in mind. What happened to both Naruto and Hinata they looked different, Naruto wasn't acting hyper, Hinata didn't even seem nervous to be standing next to the blonde and even talked with him without stuttering or blushing like mad. Everyone that tried could feel the power that radiated off both of them. Power that everyone knew they didn't possess before the start of the exam. The only people who seemed relaxed were the team sensei, Shino Aburam and Shikamaru Nara. Ino Yamanaka tried to move over to her rival and asked Sakura do you know what happened to Hinata she looked so different. And Naruto to Sakura answered, I don't know, I have been trying to figure that out ever since he suddenly changed in the forest of death, but I can't seem to find any answers. Plus Naruto keeps avoiding me, and Kakashi Sensei is reluctant to tell me anything. How why? You're his teammate if something happens to him you're supposed to know the blonde said in a suspicious tone. Sakura nodded in agreement, but said, Kakashi Sensei told me that it was an S-class secret that only Naruto, Hinata or the Hokage can tell us. That made into even more suspicious what can those two be hiding, that it's considered an S-rank secret. She thought with a scowl. Um Shikamaru, do you know what happened to Naruto and Hinata Nara's chubby friend asked as he munched down a bag of chips. Shikamaru nodded yeah I know, but I can't tell you cause it's a secret and it's probably too troublesome to explain, anyway Dottie told his friend. 
All I can say is if you ever are to fight against them quite. Shikamaru looked at him seriously. Doji was shocked as he never saw his friend this serious before, unless it was a matter of great concern. Well I know that you're strong, no of us are at Naruto and Hinata's level. Are they that strong Choji asked with a slight stutter. Shikamaru nodded. They are especially Hinata, she has a technique that makes even Naruto afraid of fighting her. That's all I can say Dadi said with a slight shiver and continued to watch the battle in front of them. Choji decided not to ask any more questions and returned to eating his chips. Hiba had set his mind on finding out the truth, but unfortunately he couldn't get anyone to talk. Kurinai told him that he would know everything in time and not to bother Hinata. Shino barely said anything, but it was obvious he knew something. That only left Naruto, Kiba was sure the blonde was the reason behind his teammate's sudden transformation. And now he was silently hoping that he would get to fight Naruto and beat him until he told him everything. Yeah that was his plan. But the members of Team Guy, Niji Uga was glaring at his former cousin who had an annoyingly cheerful attitude. His female teammate Tenten looked at her teammate in concern. While Lee was so into the battle to even notice what was going on around him. On the ground Sasuke had just managed to knock out his opponent with a combination of punches and kicks he called. Shishirenden, Lion Combo. He fell to his knees panting, his opponent had managed to siphon over half his chakra with some kind of chakra leech technique. Kakashi came down to pick him up and brought him towards his other teammates. Sakura instantly tried tending to him, but got into an argument with Ino to his annoyance, he got a nod from Naruto which he returned. Rubbing his shoulder where now sealed curse seal was he looked up to the screen competitors of the next match. Yuzumaki Naruto vs Inuzuka Kiba, he smirked finally he would get to see the blonde in action. Kiba shouted in glee, he would pummel Naruto into the ground and show Hinata that he was better than the idiot. He leaped over the railing and landed in front of the proctor, to his surprise a calm looking Naruto already stood next to Heide. He growled at the blonde. What's the matter Kiba they asked with a raised eyebrow. Nothing the dog boy growled in response. Um weren't you forgetting Akamaru. Naruto inquired. I don't need him to defeat you. Koba replied, smirking. Don't be so overconfident Kiba, it can be your downfall. Naruto replied. Just shut up and let's fight Kiba yelled back, getting into his clan's fighting stance. If that's what you want. Naruto sighed and his gaze turned so hard that it made Kiba nervous. They saw that both boys were ready and shouted begin while leaping backwards. Kiba instantly moved forward and started attacking the blonde wildly with rapid kicks and punches. But all his effort was futile as Naruto kept side-stepping and dodging every attack. He only grew angrier as he saw that Naruto still had that calm look on his face. Are you even trying to fight? He yelled asked the blonde as he dodged another one of his kicks. I don't have to. You're fighting me with aggression thus you're using more energy, trust me you will exhaust yourself before I do. Dot was his reply and ducked under Kiba's swinging appendix. Maybe or maybe it's because you're too weak to fight back. Dot Kiba said smugly. Instantly he noticed something had changed in Naruto's eyes. The next punch Kiba threw was immediately caught by the blonde, Naruto pulled the dog boy towards him and kneed him hard in the stomach, then grabbed him by his jacket and tossed him across the arena. Kiba managed to flip himself in mid-air and landed in a crouching position and immediately clutched his abdomen wincing in pain. What just happened? He inwardly questioned. Troublesome Kiba just dug his own grave. Shikamaru muttered. Why do you say that Choji asked? Just watch. The lazy Nara said. Naruto kun. Hanada whispered as she stared at her closest friend. Below Naruto slowly reached into I weapon's pouch. Kiba whistled for his partner Akamaru and tossed him soldier pill while taking one too. The dog seemed to grow slightly and his white fur started to turn red. Akamaru leaped onto Kiba's back who was on all four, forming a seal he called out, Juijin Bunshin, beast human clone with a puff of smoke Akamaru had turned into Kiba clone. And with growl they both ran towards their opponent. Naruto pulled a scroll from his pouch and spread it out on the ground. I won't let you finish. Kiba thought as he got closer, he tossed a smoke bomb towards Naruto which exploded just as the blonde slammed his hand on the scroll. Come Akamaru. Kiba yelled as he started spinning, A Kiba followed next to him as they both spun into the cloud of smoke yelling GATSUUGA dual piercing fang. Last time on No More Secrets, Naruto kun. Hanada whispered softly as she looked at her friend. Hello Naruto reached into my weapons pouch. Kiba whistled for his partner Akamaru. Said dog leaped off the balcony and ate the soldier pill that was tossed to him by his partner who ate one as well. The dog grew slightly in size, while his white fur turned crimson. A feral looking Akamaru leaped onto Kiba's back. Forming a seal he called out, Juijin Bunshin Beast Human Clone and with a puff of smoke Akamaru had turned into an exact clone of Kiba. Snarling they let out several growls before they dashed with great speed towards their opponent. Naruto meanwhile having pulled a scroll from his pouch had it spread out on the ground. I can't let him finish whatever he's planning. Kiba thought as he got closer and tossed a smoke pellet at Naruto that exploded just as the blonde slammed his hand onto the scroll. 
Come Akamaru Kiba yelled and started spinning, A Kiba followed next to him both spinning into the cloud of smoke yelling GATSUUGA dual piercing fang. Now, everyone was surprised when both Kibas were suddenly flung across the arena after they had entered the cloud of smoke not moments ago. The cloud dispatched showed Naruto crouched with his head down, his hands still on the scroll in the center of a rapid spinning dome of wind. That move is similar to KAIT and Heavenly Spin. Niji thought of gritting his teeth. How dare that commoner try to copy our clan's secret technique. He let out a low growl that startled Tenten next to him. Niji. She thought sadly. What instantly caught everyone's attention was the pile of shurikens that now lay around the spinning wind sphere as it slowly dispersed. To their surprise each one of those weapons started to rise from the ground, hovering above Naruto like a cloud. How are those shurikens spinning all by themselves Eno exclaimed, shocked at what she was witnessing, as were a few others. That is Jaiten, one of Naruto's, he creates magnetic forces that allow him to control any metal object at will. Kurinai explained. The genin turned to look at the red-eyed Kinoichi, giving her their attention. But Naruto never told us that he had a bloodline. Sakura said, surprised. Eh? He's your teammate Sakura, how did you not know Ino questioned. It's because he never told us. The pink head's answer. There's a lot that you don't know about Naruto. Hanada thought having heard what the others said. Her eyes were still focused on Naruto who started to stand up. Gurunai sensei you said Genkase, does that mean that he has more Ino was the one who asked the question. Gurunai nodded. Yes, in total he has three dots shocking most of the genin except Hanada, Shino, Shikamaru. They all turned to stare at Naruto in amazement. How is that possible Sakura gasped. Bakashi placed a hand on Sakura's shoulder. That's something only Naruto can tell you, if he wants to. Naruto's gaze focused on Kiba while his activeness was spinning slowly, analyzing every movement. What is that an awestruck Shoji asked Shikamaru. That is Naruto's, he calls it Teigen. It's believed to be on par with a Sharingan or even better. He told the young Akamichi. Sasuke was sitting close by, heard what had been said. That's impossible, nothing is equal to the power of the Sharingan. He thought clenching his fist hard until his knuckles turned white. Is it true what Shikamaru said to Kakashi Sensei Sakura asked her teacher. Kakashi nodded in confirmation. Wow. Who knew Naruto could be this strong Ino said while leaning on the railing. Back at the fight Kiba had managed to hear what the other said and growled. Just because he has three bloodlines doesn't make him strong, I'll prove it by beating him. He dashed forward followed by a Kiba towards the blonde. Naruto following Kiba's movement stretched his arm out towards them. Instantly half of the massive shuriken shot forward towards the pair. Kiba and Akamaru were now constantly dodging the spinning blades as they kept coming back. After receiving several cuts from dodging shurikens, Kiba shot a quick glance at Naruto, who was moving his arms around, obviously controlling the movement of the shurikens. A sudden whimpering caught Kiba's ear, and he turned to see his partner tied up by ninja wire that was secured in place by embedded in the ground. Shuriken spin with deadly speed and accuracy around the transformed dog to prevent Kiba from getting close to him. The blades around Kiba stopped attacking him for a moment. I don't want to hurt you Kiba. Naruto said calmly. I've already captured Akamaru and you can't possibly take me on without him. It's best if you just give up. Kiba was pissed. How can I lose to him? This is Naruto, the dead last of our class. I should be stronger than him. Give up. What is he thinking? I never, I'll show him that I'm better. He thought and reached into his pocket, taking out three soldier pills. Kiba. Don't do this Naruto warned as he pulled back every one of his shurikens except the one surrounding Akamaru. Kiba stop, that's dangerous Kurinai yelled visibly on the edges was everyone else. The proctor was about to intervene, but a sign from the Hokage told him to wait. Kiba turned out everyone was ignoring their warning. I'll show them all. He thought of swallowing the three pills and got on all four. For a second nothing seemed to happen, but suddenly chakra erupted from every pore of Kiba's body, blazing like a wildfire. His eyes were completely white, and his features had turned more feral as he grinned viciously at Naruto and let out a powerful roar that shook the building ever so slightly. Everyone could feel the intensity of the chakra radiating from the Inuzuka. What happened to Kiba Sakura asked gasped out loud. That idiot. Kurinai cursed, slamming her fist on the railing. Those are soldier pills that he swallowed said Mido Guy with a serious face, every turn to wearing spandex. Dot, they instantly replenish a person's chakra so that he can keep on fighting. That doesn't sound too bad. Dot, Ino said. It isn't, until it wears off and exhaustion catches up with said person, he can be out for a day or two. Prolonged use can even place you on the sidelines for an entire month. That's bad. Dot, Tenten said, shocked. Niji scoffed. Lee was cheering. Finding the battle the most youthful he had ever seen. He probably didn't know what was going on around him. Troublesome. Shikamaru muttered. What an idiot. Sasuke thought, shaking his head. The other members of teammate didn't say anything as they kept their eyes focused on their teammate. 
since Kiba was crazy enough to take three of those pills, three times the amount of chakra is replenished back in his chakra reserve, too much for his body to store thus leaks out of his pores. Asuma decided to add. Though it won't cause any long-term damage to his body, he will be extremely sore from being sprained so much. Kiba snarled furiously when Naruto clasped both of his hands together, with his take in analyzing the whole situation. The shurikens and above the blondes start to pile together, forming a torpedo of deadly rotating blades. So that's what he's planning to do. Kakashi thought and uncovered his Sharingan, a quick glance to the side, and he noticed that Sasuke and Niji had also activated theirs. Kiba leaped up into the air and started to spin forward, turning into a giant blue chakra drill that sped straight towards the blonde Uzumaki with frightening speed. Naruto's hand shifted from the snake seal to the tiger that caused his shuriken kunai drill to shoot forward with amazing speed. Hayden he whispered, everyone's eyes widened in surprise as the shuriken kunai drill burst into flames, becoming a spinning torpedo of fire on a straight collision course with Kiba. Yuzu no Kiba fire style. Vortex fang both vortexes colliding. Boom. The explosion that followed sent heavy tremors through the whole tower. Metal went flying all over the arena, and everybody prepared to block them only for the broken weapons to stop in mid-air before they could hit anyone. All the broken projectiles started moving back, disappearing into the cloud of dust and smoke that was created as a result of the explosion. That Inuzaka brat got guts, pulling off something that stupid and dangerous Anko used, sounding impressed. Although it was a pretty powerful attack it would never work against my Naruto-chan. From the moment his Taigen is active it's already calculating multiple winning strategies that he can use. She stated proudly. People would do anything to get their hands on something that can put the Sharingan to shame. Kiba underestimated Naruto from the beginning because he was this year's dead last, and his arrogance got in the way, and he acted recklessly. Siratobi said, shaking his head in disappointment. Hard-headed and cocky he is like every Inuzuka that's for sure. I think he needs to work on his temper a bit and learn not to act so rashly. Marino Ibiki said. Everyone there nodded in agreement. But the sand team. That blonde kid, he behaves differently than before, and he is stronger than he looks. The blonde Kanoichi said with a small smirk. Her teammate, a war paint wearing boy, scoffed I'm not impressed, I could probably easily beat him with Karasu, Crowdotti said, patting the wrapped bundle on his back. Damari shot him a glare. Kankuro don't be stupid, Karasu exterior is made of wood the rest is metal, he can control metal objects, do the math. Tamari scolded, and then proceeded to mutter under her breath about brothers with beans for brains. I knew that. Kankuro said, rubbing the back of his head. Baka Dotti heard Tamari grumble. The sound team sensei, who was in fact Orochimaru in disguise, had a scowl on his face, as the cloud of smoke and dust slowly started to clear. That Yuzumaki brat where did he get that power from? He bit his lips as he thought. Kabuto didn't have any useful information on him. Except for him being the class dead last and having no talent as a ninja at all. But here he proves otherwise, he has a I never heard of and a secondary bloodline that only a few ninjas from Kumo and Suna once possessed. Kumo and Kanoha aren't on the best of terms with each other. And the boy's parents aren't related in any way to the deceased Sandane Kazakiage. What can it be? What could that old fool be hiding? I must find out. He glared at his former sensei that was in a confrontation with the head of the T&I and his former apprentice Anko. Anko Kabuto had told him that his ex-pupil and the Yuzumaki kid were really close in a way. He smirked evilly, maybe there was a way to get the information he needed after all. As the cloud of dust settled down everyone could see Kiba laying in a crater on the floor unconscious. His jacket completely torn, his body battered, bruised and bound with ninja wire that had cut deep into his skin, blood had started to slowly seep out of his wounds. Naruto was sitting next to the passed out boy and ran a hand through his golden locks. Why are you always so stubborn Kiba he asked sighing not expecting an answer since that boy was knocked out cold. He whipped out a kunai and cut through the wires, you really didn't have to go that far to prove that you were strong. You clearly improved since our academy days together, but you still tend to underestimate your opponents, and our fight proved just that. He stood up before dusting himself off and started walking towards the stairs. Maybe next time when you get stronger we can fight as equals. Hey8 went to check on the Inuzuka and cough before calling winner Yuzumaki Naruto. Medics rushed past the proctor and started healing Kiba before he went into shock due to blood loss. After they managed to stabilize him he was brought away for further treatment. His partner Akimaru whom Naruto had released in the meantime, ran after the medics to stay with his owner. Naruto had meanwhile made his way up the stairs where he was congratulated by a few of his former classmates. That was a great battle, Naruto. Naruto.Choji said. It certainly was Naruto, though I didn't expect you to recreate Kiba's and use it against him. Kurenai said. Pretty impressive I might say. It's just something I came up with. Dot was the blonde's reply laughing sheepishly as he rubbed the back of his head. But how were you able to bind Kiba if I may ask Naruto-kun? Shino asked the question. Oh that was easy. 
I had hooked up several lines of wire on Kiba's clothes when he was dodging the shurikens. The moment he would use Gatsuuga it would twist around his body, then tighten to effectively slow him down enough for me to attack him. But I didn't expect him to use those soldier pills, that's the reason why I returned to alternate methods. Astoundingly, he was only able to see that technique once and thought so many steps ahead on how to defeat it, even going as far as to make his own version of said technique. Kakashi mused inwardly. Good job Naruto. Sasuke watched quietly as Naruto walked past him and went to stand next to a smiling Hinata. How does he have a that is better than my Sharingan, and he never told me. When did they get so close Ino asked Sakura. Said girl didn't answer as she looked the other way, don't tell me. You had no idea Sasu probably doesn't know anything either. She muttered that last part. She sighed, shaking her head. She's Sakura it seems to me like Naruto doesn't trust you or Sasuke, if he had to hide these things from you, his teammates. She said Sakura stayed quiet. Ino decided not to ask any more questions because the pink head was reluctant to answer. Down below the proctor had already called for the next match. Aburam Shino Zaku. This battle was quickly and easily won by Shino. His opponent was too overconfident ever since the battle started and continually started firing multiple air shots at Shino who kept dodging. Zaku, focusing entirely on the Aburam, didn't notice the bugs that Shino had hidden in plain sight crawling up behind. Only at the last moment when he felt them curl up his legs did he try to blow them off, but by then it was already too late as Shino used that distraction to unleash more of his bugs on him. The sound ninja was drained of his chakra and unconscious in no time. A.N. Just to let you know I'm not planning to go into details about the other battles. The fights went the same way as in the anime. The fights that followed afterwards were Sabaku no Kankura winning from Tsurugi Misumi. Shikamaru used his brains and won against Tsuchi Kin. Tenten was defeated by Sabaku no Tamari because Suna Kanoichi's wind attacks rendered all her weapons attacks useless. The fight between Ino and Sakura was probably the most boring fight ever. Almost the whole battle both Kanoichis kept yelling insults at each other, but at one point started to fight seriously. Their match ended in a draw when they knocked each other out. Choji had to fight against Kanuta Dosu from the sound. He was afraid to fight at first, but eventually did when his sensei Asuma promised him BBQ, unfortunately he still lost. The fights pretty much were starting to get boring until the next match was announced. Uhi Hinata vs Hayuga Niji, the former heiress of the Hayuga clan against the Hayuga clan's prodigy. Both competitors stood in front of each other, neither moving an inch as Hayde announced for the battle to start. I would be wise for you to quit this pointless fight right now before I humiliate you in front of everyone. Niji spoke in an emotionless tone. Hinata didn't reply. You can choose to continue, but failures like you are always destined to lose against geniuses like me. Hinata at that shook her head. You're wrong Niji, our fate is not written in stone or chosen by anybody, I can choose my own destiny, depending on the decisions I make in life. I won't let nobody tell me otherwise. She said, and shifted into her fighting stance. One will always lose against the ones considered geniuses if he believes he can't win and doesn't even try. But one can defeat a genius if he trains hard enough and if he's determined to keep on trying and never give up. Niji glared at the girl saying, don't say I didn't warn you. He activated his Byakugan and slipped in the Hayuga's gentle fist stance. Lunged forward at each other engaging in a fierce Jutsu battle, Niji attacked with Juikin, while Hinata utilized a similar style that required more speed and flexibility which she clearly possessed. She fraught with enough such grace that it annoyed Niji when he couldn't hit her dot. Being a former Hayuga, Hinata knew exactly how to deflect every one of his blows without fear of her arms getting disabled. That guy's eyes are really creeping me out. Sakura shuddered. Just look at how his veins pop at the side of his head. She shivered. Suddenly remembering something she turned to the leader of teammate. Kurenai sensei dot she spoke respectfully. If Anata was from the same clan as him, why aren't her eyes like that? What happened to her wide eyes? Why are they now purple she asked curiously. For a moment a pain glint appeared before disappearing as quick as it came. Hinata doesn't have Byakugan anymore. Dot the Kinoichi answered. Sakura and Ino both gasped because they didn't know as did Choji. Not noticing how Naruto's hands gripped the rails of the balcony tighter. The Genin looked at him confused when they heard the metal creak under his grip. What's with Naruto? Ino thought. What is wrong with the dope? Was the thought running through Ichiha's head. Even after all this time he still blames himself for what happened five years ago. Kakashi thought sadly. WH how come Sakura stuttered, surprised. An accident I rather not want to be reminded of. Kurenai said, looking at Hinata sadly. But the began but stopped when she saw Kakashi give her a look that told her to drop it. But she did gain something better than the Byakugan. One that could easily shame the Sharingan and maybe even Naruto's Teigen. Kurin I thought. Down below Hinata had started sensing Naruto's uneasiness and grew concerned while batting aside another one of Niji's strikes. The Hayuga prodigy clearly started to get frustrated. How is she able to keep up with me? 
What's the matter with Niji Hinata asked. I thought you would actually put up a better fight than this. Infuriated, the Hayuga started to strike faster, aiming a palm strike towards Hinata. But said girl ducked under his outstretched arm and went to kick Niji's feet from under him. Niji saw the attack coming and somersaulted over the girl. Landing swiftly he spun and aimed another strike at the back of the still crouched Hinata. Got ya? He thought, smirking. Hinata on instinct rolled out of the way just as Niji Chakra covered hand and hit the ground missing his target. He had immediately flipped backwards just in time to avoid a lightning sphere as it impacted with the ground he stood on not long before. He turned his head towards Hinata and glared. Now standing further away from were three Hinatas, the first he knew had thrown the lightning sphere, since she had another one hovering in her palm, the second one he suspected had to be the original was standing behind her clones. And the third Hinata was holding three shurikens in each of her hands. Those aren't normal bunchens. When did she even make them? He thought blaring at all three duplicates with disdain. No matter how many of you there, fate is on my side that's why I will win Dottie said confidently and dashed forward in detriment to end the battle now. Hinata's clone threw the shuriken she was holding at Niji. You think a few shurikens will stop me? He thought but then heard the clone call out Ninpo. Shuriken Cage Bunshin. Before his eyes the six incoming blades multiplied into sixty, he immediately halted his movement and started to spin like a top. Hakishu Katen, heavenly spin he yelled. Chakra erupting from his pores of his body shaping into a the dome of chakra. The shurikens harmlessly bounced of said dome. Isn't that the same Naruto used against Kibachoji asked. No, it isn't. Naruto's was based off that move, the only difference is that Naruto used wind nature chakra to make air spin around him, while Niji releases chakra from his entire body, and by spinning shapes it into a dome. Asuma answered his student's question. When Niji came to a stop he was immediately knocked backwards by a sudden powerful torrent of water. Everyone looked surprised when they saw Hinata releasing a stream of water out of her mouth. Her clone at her side was releasing a constant flow of electricity in their attack. The force behind her attack was so powerful that Niji was slammed hard into the arena wall with a loud smack to his body. The Hayuga prodigy fell limply to the ground. I can't feel my body. He tried to move his arms and legs but failed, every part of his body felt numb. Don't bother trying to move, combining Raiden and Suetan works numbing on the body. He heard Hinata's faint voice in the background. She was right, he couldn't move a muscle. He felt his eyes grow heavier and slipped into unconsciousness not long after. When did she get stronger than me? Was his final thought before he passed out. Turning her back towards Niji she dispelled her clones and started walking away. Niji lost Lee thought, shocked. When are you he Hinata hey, declared. Hinata is that strong dot no gaped. Walking making it up the stairs came face to face with her sensei. You did a great Hinata. I'm proud of you. Kurinai praised her students. Thank you Kurinai sensei. Dot, she replied smiling. So the little outcast managed to beat the rookie of the previous year, the prodigy of the Hyuga clan. Hirachimaru thought of holding up two cards that showed information on both fighters. Strange, the skill level of every genin that fought here was accurate except for those two. He watched Hinata interact with the people around her. The former Hayuga gets compliments from the people around her, Will the blonde speaks with the Nara kid. He has an unknown bloodline, and that girl there is something familiar about her chakra that I can't quite put my finger on at the moment. He thought and placed his hand in a seal. But that's something for another day, for now I have seen enough. And he disappeared in a puff of smoke. The final match of the preliminary rounds Hayate announced. Will the last two competitors come down? Time skip, fight ends the same way like it did in the Anime, except this time Guy managed to save Lee before he got crushed by Gara's sand. Everyone who had won a match stood in front of the Hokage and the Proctors. Marino Ibiki made them each draw a piece of paper from a bowl. Now tell me the number that stands on your paper. Gunaruto spoke first. Seven Shikamaru replied lazily. Poor Gara spoke in an emotionless tone. Nine his teammate Tamari responded. Five Shino answered. One Hinata said. Eight Dosu responded. Three Sasuke said. Six Ed smirking a Kankuro. Ibiki wrote something down on a clipboard. After a while he stopped and scanned over it one more time before showing it to them. This is the match lineup for the third final round of the exam that will be held in one month. The Genins read. First match. Yuhi Hinata vs. Yuzumaki Naruto. Second match. Ichiha Sasuke vs. Ibaku no Gara. Third match. Abura Mishino vs. Ibaku no Kankuro. Fourth match. Nara Shikamaru vs. Kanuta Dosu. Fifth match. Sabaku no Tamari vs. winner of the first match, but Kankura yelled. That's why we had to draw those numbers. Ibiki nodded, that's how we do things here in Kanahagakur. Dadi replied coolly. You have seen how your future opponent fights, so I suggest all use the time you have been given to train. Dadi advised. Some of the genin nodded. You're dismissed. I have to be the one that fights the Ichiha and finally show Rachimaru sama my worth. Dosu thought. But first I have to take out the competition, starting with Gara. 
His eyes followed the red head as he left with his teammates. Tsubaku no Gara. Sasu thought while watching the Suna Genin. I have to get even stronger than I am now if I want to defeat him. I have to fight Naruto-kun. Hinata thought for some reason feeling extremely excited. I have to fight Hinata-chan. Naruto also thought a small smile graced his lips. Finally I will finally be able to fight him or her again without having to hold back. They thought simultaneously. I can't wait for this year's Chunin exam final. The fights are going to be epic. Anko started grinning cheeky. Okajama, is it wise to let those two fight each other in the finals? Kurinai asked. You know what happened the last time they fought without restraint. Naruto and Hinata can damage the arena a great deal. She shuddered remembering that day. I don't know what you guys are scared of. Anko mused. It's not like they did that much damage. Just a destroyed training ground that could have easily been fixed. Ouch. Kurinai elbowed the snake mistress in the ribs. What's the deal, Kurinai? She cried, rubbing her side. Kurinai san is Hokajama. Kakashi said, agreeing with the Kanoichi. This is dangerous. Tsuritobi chuckled and shook his head. None of you have to worry about them, I already forbade Naruto and Hinata from using those. He told both. They sighed in relief. Well, I have to get Sasu to the hospital for a last medical checkup before we leave. Kakashi said, walking towards his student. I'll try to get Shikamaru to train this month. Asuma sighed, strolling away. Shino is going to be trained by his father, so I have time to train Hinata. Kurinai said, and followed behind Asuma. Everyone else also left, leaving Anko, the Hokage, and Naruto. So who is going to train me? The blonde asked. Tsuritobi smiled, Anko, of course, and a close friend of mine, will also be aiding her. He told the blonde. Okay, so when will I meet this friend? Naruto asked. Tomorrow at Taudo. Today we will celebrate you making it to the finals. Anko grinned, grabbing the boy by his collar, before he could react and disappeared in a swirl of leaves. Saratobi sweat dropped before performing seals and disappeared in a burst of smoke. Flashback five years back, training ground, okay only one left, I have to make it. A seven-year-old small blonde boy thought while he was focusing on a straw dummy in front of him. He cocked his arm backwards before swinging it forward, releasing the kunai he held in his hand thud hitting the target dead center. The Adahi yelled happily while jumping in joy. I finally hit all 10 targets without missing one Dottie said being extremely proud of himself. Suddenly his stomach grumbled and he blushed in embarrassment. By the angle of the sun he could tell that it was already past midday time too he for Ichiraku he thought. But first he went to collect all the kunais he had thrown. He was leaping through the trees of the training ground and was close to reaching town when he heard it. He heard someone was crying then others were snicker, deciding to investigate he moved to where he heard the mock laughter. When he arrived he grew angry looking at the scene from where he stood high up on a branch. Down below he saw three boys harassing and mocking a girl around his age by shoving her face into the dirt. Said girl was constantly apologizing for what exactly he didn't know, but seeing her tears streaming down her face made his heart ache. Painfully, he clenched his fist until his knuckles turned completely white, he had to do something, and he was going to do something. He silently leaped down and landed in a bush behind the boys, he stepped out and yelled at them, hey leave her alone. The boys turned around to see who it was and started laughing when they saw the small blonde who's gonna make use. You, I don't think so. We're older than you and could easily kick you so get lost. The one who was obviously the leader said. No. Naruto answered bravely. I will not let you hurt her anymore he yelled angrily and did a few seals. The leader's two companions gasped, he's going to do it. Don't worry guys, he's not even in the academy yet, there is nothing he can do that can harm us. Their leader assured them. Anada, who had managed to calm down a little, stared at a rescuer. It's him. She thought then gasped. Being brought up in her clan you were taught how to use and sense chakra from a very early age. Now here in front of her she felt Naruto building up a lot of chakra, the amount of chakra that a kid his age should never possess normally. Whatever he was planning must be big. This technique is only for people with a lot of chakra, luckily you have more than enough to perform it. But remember as long as it's active it will drain your chakra Anko's words rang through his head. Inpo. Gaiman Tiki, S-H-I-N-K-I-R-M Ninja, Art. Deceptive Mirage Dottie whispered. Instantaneously the forest darkened as if it was night, and Naruto disappeared into the darkness. What is happening one of the boys asked, frightened as he moved closer to their leader. I don't know Dottie stuttered. The air around them started to become extremely hard to breathe, and it felt as if the gravity's pull increased drastically. A loud snarling sound caught their attention, and they whipped their heads around to see two piercing red slit eyes glaring at them from the darkness of the forest. They grew so scared that they urinated in their pants out of fear. It was like the trees started to part as the red eyes grew bigger and came closer. The sudden sight of nine red tails swaying was too much for them, and they fainted. Instantly the forest returned to normal, and Naruto who had not moved from his position plopped down on the ground. I won't try that again for a while Dottie panted between breaths. 
in front of him Hinata was staring with wide eyes at him, her mind trying to process everything that just happened. The sudden change from day to night and the appearance of the red fox. It wasn't or else she would have felt her chakra flow being disturbed, this this was real. But how did he do it? She noticed him standing up and walking towards her. What was she supposed to do? She mentally slapped herself. Thank him of course, he just saved her from these bullies. Hey are you okay Dottie asked, looking at her in concern. Lowered her head and blushed, what was she supposed to say? Anada Sama where are you she heard her bodyguard KM call. She quickly looked up, he was gone, sadness filled her heart, she couldn't even thank him properly. KM arrived oh thank goodness Anada Sama I found you Dottie said in relief, then saw the unconscious boys. What happened here? It doesn't matter. Hinata Sama, your father and Kurenai Sen have been worried about you. Why did you run away? He asked as he led the heiress away. Hinata looked back for the last time and saw the blonde step out from behind one of the trees. He smiled at her, she blushed again. When they would meet again and they would, she was going to thank him properly. The next day on the Hukage Mountain, Naruto sighed from his position on Yandame's head, memories of yesterday still running through his head. He felt kind of guilty for using the image of the Kaiubi to scare those boys. Did they deserve it, one part of himself felt like they did, but the other part was really confused. When he told his sister Anko she told him they had I coming, and she would have probably done something much worse, but hey, that was coming from someone who torture people for a living. He sighed again looking over the village. It was really beautiful and he hoped to one day be the village leader. He heard soft footsteps behind him and turned his head, there she was blushing like mad while smiling softly. Ah no, Konnichiwa Naruto Kondat she greeted him. Man she had a beautiful voice. Where did that thought come from? He frowned. I brought this for you as a thank you for yesterday. She said rapidly, but he still managed to understand her, she presented him with a small carton box. He took the box from her hands, thank you um Hinata was it Naruto hesitantly asked, at least he thought he heard that man from yesterday call her that. She blushed again, she sure those that a lot, who was she sick or something. He thought. Hi, it's Hinata. His face was still red. Thank you Hinata. He grinned at her, she smiled in return. Opening up the small box slowly he had already guessed that it was food by the smell. Cinnamon rolls. He thought as he stared at the box contents. He reached for one of the buns and took a bite out of it. His eyes widened immediately when he tasted the small cake, this is delicious. He exclaimed. Hinata was taken aback, she did not expect that reaction out of him. He liked it. She thought happily. Ah no if you want, I can make more for you. She offered blushing. You made these. Naruto said in disbelief. Hi she nodded. But Naruto's demeanor changed, you're different he said blandly. Most of the time people from your clan always look down on people like me Dottie pointed out. Hinata started to feel sad and lowered her head in shame. She came from a clan full of pride because they had their so-called all-seeing eyes. They thought they were invincible and that everyone else was inferior to them. But she hated that and now he would probably hate her for the way her clan treated other people. But like I said you're different, I have this feeling that you don't treat others like trash Dottie grinned at her. I like that. She felt her heart leap for joy, happy that he didn't resent her for her family's scornful behavior. Cinnamon roll he offered to hold the open box in front of her. I can't finish these all by myself Dottie said smiling. She was reluctant at first because she actually made them for him, but he kept politely insisting that she took one, so she did. Naruto then patted the open space on Yandame's head next to him, you can sit here next to me Dottie suggested. The flustered Hinata went to sit next to the blonde, while well, her mind was in overdrive, just by how close she was to her crush. As time went by Naruto held a small conversation with Hinata, he would ask her a question, and she would answer but never ask in return. Though he noticed that Hinata would often become uncomfortable when he asked about her clan. He decided to let it go and change the subject. They were having a great time and everything was going well until. There he is they both heard someone shout some distance away from them. They turned their heads around and immediately saw the crowd of civilians that had gathered not far from them armed with sticks, stones, pitchforks, everything that was usable as a weapon. Amongst the people Naruto noticed the three boys he scared yesterday with smirks plastered in their smug faces. He's trying to corrupt the Hyuga era some else yelled from the midst of the crowd. Naruto-kun what's happening the blonde heard Hinata's frightened question. He didn't know what to tell her, he was busy thinking of a way to get them to escape the wrath of the people. Going down the way he came would be impossible since they blocked the staircase, jumping off the mountain would be suicide, that left the forest. He grinned as he got an idea and turned to the Hyuga. Hinata will lead them away then you go back home, I will see you some other time dot and with that he dashed into the forest. The crowd charged past Hinata while some shouted words like die demon, kill him while he's still in his weak human form. One of the villagers walked up to the Hyuga princess and kneeled in front of her, don't worry Hyuga sama when we catch and kill that demon you will be released from his spell dot he told her and ran after the crowd. Hinata stood there frozen and scared out of her mind, what was she supposed to do? Her friend was in trouble. 
Would she really abandon him by running away, no, she would feel extremely guilty if he got hurt. She was going to get help from the Hokid she thought. He would definitely help Naruto come. She ran as fast as her feet could carry her to the stair when suddenly she heard an explosion coming from the forest. He snapped back Naruto kun. She whispered her heart skipping a few beats. Collecting enough courage she decided and ran into the forest while activating her Byakugan, she was going to help her Naruto kun. Somehow, deep in the forest, his heart was pounding rapidly inside his chest as he hid behind one of the trees. These villagers were insane, he just fooled them with one of his fake mirages of himself. What he didn't expect was one of them throwing a kunai with an exploding tag attached straight at it. There had to be shinobi amongst them since civilians were allowed to purchase those weapons. Apparently they didn't believe he was dead because he could hear them getting closer to his position. Gathering chakra again he created another mirage image of himself and sent it another way to lead them away. Sustaining that technique was really eating at his chakra, especially when he made it move. He's not dead yet. Look. Let's get him they fell for the bait, but that didn't soothe his nerves, this group was small, so they must split up to find him much faster. He ran the other way, he had to hurry and get out of this forest fast. I think he is this way dot he heard someone say. He cursed another group. Quickly looking he noticed a dark hollow tree, and without hesitation he went to hide inside. From the inside he saw a group of 15 men armed with clubs and pitchforks stop in front of the tree. This forest is so dense you could barely see in the distance, he could be hiding anywhere. One spoke up. Well we can start by looking in there. Another suggested pointing straight at the dark hollow tree. Naruto's eyes widened, they would find him he was done for. One of the civilians, a very muscular guy, stepped towards the tree with his club in hand. Naruto's heart pounded faster as the man came closer, he only had a few more steps to take. Just then to Naruto's relief a civilian ran up to the man. We've cornered him, he isn't getting anywhere. He told them pointing in some random direction. The men got an excited look and ran towards where the male civilian pointed to. When they were out of view the civilian turned to the hollow tree and said, you can come out now Dot and he was covered in a cloud of smoke. Anata stepped out of the small smoke screen panting slightly and watched as the blonde came out of the tree. Anata, what are you doing here? I thought I told you to return home Dottie asked, surprised and concerned. Said girl looked down sadly, I got worried about you Naruto-kun, and when I heard the explosion I wanted to see if you were alright. She said almost not stuttering. Naruto felt some form of relief. I can't be mad at you because you just saved me from being clobbered. He chuckled softly. Thank you Hinata. Dot, and without thinking he hugged her. Hinata couldn't believe what was happening, she was being hugged by her crush. Summoning all the courage she could muster she prevented herself from fainting and tried savor the moment. Now let's get out of here. Dot, he said releasing her. And they started running through the forest again until. Crack, they stopped, crack crack crack. They both looked down just as the ground under them gave away and they fell through a hole. Thud, Naruto groaned, his back ached because of fall, and the added weight on top of him didn't make him feel any better. Wait what was on top of him, he opened his eyes, and midnight blue hair came in his vision. The EP heard a squeal and the weight on him disappeared. Pushing himself up he saw Hinata pressing her fingers together in front of him, while she blushed madly. She can be really strange sometimes. He thought, looking at her oddly. He started looking around where they were, it looked like some kind of lab. He saw various operating tools like scalpels, scopes you name it were neatly stashed. In the center stood an operating table and on the counters, there were a few test tubes and jars containing odd-looking organisms, some eyeballs and other things he couldn't describe. Though it looked like it hadn't been used in a while since everything here was covered in layers of dust. Still the place smelt like death, and it made both feel sick in their stomachs. Naruto kun where are we Hinata asked. I don't know Dottie replied. But can you find a way out of here with you know Dottie pointed to her eyes. She nodded and placed her hands in a seal before muttering, by Akugan dot veins popped at the side of her head as she started to scan the whole room. There is a door there, she pointed to the back of the room. But it's barricaded on the other side dot she said disappointed. Don't worry Hinata, we'll find a way out of here dot Naruto was grinning. It perked her up slightly. Still I want to know what those are Dottie said asked, pointing to the three enormous glass cylinders that almost reached the roof. The first two seemed to be containing some kind of blue fluid. Well the third one that stood further away contained what they saw was a hovering sphere of chakra. But it was not your average kind of chakra that had the normal blue color, this one had a white silver color and was radiating an immense power. On the floor around the container he noticed multiple layers of seals present. Their purpose was unknown to him. It feels so familiar he said quietly. Hinata looked at him confused as he walked towards the glass containers. Wiping the dust away from that covered a label on the tank and here at Project Biju. Incomplete. Biju? What the heck is that? He inwardly wondered. Moving to the next glass cylinder he noticed it was labeled. Keke Genkai Genetics. Unstable. Both liquid-filled cylinders were labeled the same. Seems like someone tried to experiment but failed. 
Naruto thought. I don't think Kokuja Jiasen knows about this place. Naruto said to the Hyuga princess next to him. When he didn't get a reply, he looked around only to see her staring mesmerized at the chakra cylinder. Um Hinata, he said again. She seemed to snap back to reality and turn her head to the blonde. Are you alright? He asked. She gave a small nod. I'm okay, na Naruto kun, but this chakra it's alive. She told him. He gave her an odd look, that's impossible, he said, and eyed the chakra carefully as it just floated in its container. I don't see anything unusual, Dot, he said after a few seconds. Maybe you can only see it with Byakugan, Dot, she replied. He shrugged, maybe, Dot, he muttered. But let's find a way to get out of here, Dot, he said, and they started looking. Upstairs in the forest, so you're saying some guy told you we had captured the demon brat, Dot, said a fat civilian man. And you believed him. Yeah, he sounded very convincing. One responded as the two groups all walked together towards the exit of the forest. That rat is as tricky as the fox he is. The fat man grumbled out loud. He's probably already back in town. I wouldn't be so sure. A voice said from above. They all watched as white haired ninja landed in front of them. You better start talking, Mizuki. The muscular one said in a threatening tone while he lifted up his club. Raised his arms in defense, no need to get violent, Ryu san he said, smirking. I was trailing him from the shadows and saw him fall in a hole not far from here. Mizuki said, but leaving out the part that he was accompanied by the Hyuga heiress. Ryu growled then why didn't you finish him off? He asked furiously. Mizuki chucked. I thought it was your wish for the demon to die by your own hand, you know, since he killed your brother. He was brought up. A sudden fire appeared in Ryu's eyes and snarled leap away. Mizuki turned around smirking evilly and led the man to a hole that was about two feet in diameter. And to their luck or to his ill luck they immediately noticed Naruto, he started up to them with wide eyes. Well well, well demon it seems that you trapped. Ryu spat at him. And you have nowhere to go. You know I have waited a long time for this. He said in an emotionless tone. Reaching into his pocket he pulled out a kunai that had a ball made of exploding tags the size of an orange attached at the end by a string. By killing you today I will finish Yandame's job and my brother will finally be able to rest in peace. He declared, ignoring the shocked looks of the people around him. He was about to chuck the kunai at the blonde when a new voice said, hold it right there Ryu-san. The Hokage four teams of Anbu Black Ops and a few others landed all around them, Ryu put that kunai away. The Hokage ordered sternly. What you're doing here is wrong and you know it. How's it wrong huh, this demon killed many people and you're trying to protect him he said, gripping the blade tightly. He is not the demon Ryu I he was, he would have killed everybody here already. Siratobi said, walking towards the man slowly. Can you give me the kunai before anyone gets hurt? Listen to him Ryu, what you're doing is crazy. This explosion can kill all of us. One of the civilians tried convince him that it was suicide and homicide. I don't care. He yelled back. Okajama the Hyuga heiress is also down there. One of the Anbus informed me. Hiruzen looked towards the hole and saw the scared Hyuga girl standing next to Naruto. What is she doing here? He thought alarmed. Ryu took that moment of distraction and threw the kunai in the hole and performed a seal to activate it. Every ninja grabbed a civilian and leaped away as far as possible, two Anbu grabbed Ryu as he laughed like a maniac. Tsuritobi went to grab the purple-haired Kanoichi Anko Midrashi as she ran to the hole, yelling at Toto. Ha bomb, flashback pause, three weeks before Chunin exam finals, nighttime forest outside a village not far from Kanoha. Naruto sat on a log staring aimlessly into the campfire in front of him, he sighed. Can't sleep Nichan he asked a person that appeared next to him. I was about to ask you the same thing. Anko replied and took a seat next to him. She noticed his distant look in his eyes and also sighed, you were having those nightmares again weren't you? He nodded faintly. Understandable since it was around this time five years ago since it happened. She said taking a nearby stick and started poking the burning logs. You know it wasn't your fault right? She said. Naruto answered, sometimes I feel like it is. He placed his head on both his arms. She could have died Anko ni if it wasn't for Emi-chan saving her. I could have lost you to that day. She was sadly reminded. Don't forget that if it wasn't for Kurama you would be dead right now. Yeah I know. Naruto muttered. Don't let that get you down Naruto kun. Anko said to him. Hinata may have lost her by Akigen that day, but she got something better and stronger in return. Just like how you got your Taigen. The blonde nodded sadly. But she got kicked out of her clan, she lost her whole family. He said gazing into the dark forest. It sickens me that people would just banish their own kin because they don't possess any anymore. Naruto scowled deeply. Anko sighed, Naruto, it's time that I told you the complete truth as to why Hinata was actually disowned. She said. The complete truth, Naruto asked, looking at his sister with a raised eyebrow. Anko nodded, as you already know when both you and Hinata were in that month-long recovery coma, after you survived that incident, the doctors had found out that she had been completely erased after the eye scans. They thought that genetic liquid you both were exposed to was the cause of it. She explained thoroughly, and Naruto listened quietly. 
and you also know that it returned three days after she woke up, as the improved and stronger version of the Byakugan, the Tsukigan Lunar Eye, as she loves to call it now. Naruto nodded. He already knew that Hinata's Tsukigan was better than the Hyuga clan's wide eyes, just like how his Tagan could give the Sharingan a run for its money. Anko continued, but what you didn't know was that the clan council elders were planning to brand Hinata with a caged bird seal and place her with their clan's branch family. She explained. That was decided the moment Hiashi told them of the unfortunate event, they said that the Hyuga clan didn't deserve a clan head that didn't even possess them. Naruto clenched his fist and growled slowly, those nonsense. Didn't her father try to do anything? He asked, growing angry. Anko smirked at the boy, easy Naruchan, I'm getting to that. Don't call me that, Naruto grumbled. The snake mistress chuckled and patted him on the head. Now, where was Ioya, Hiashi? She pondered out loud. But what you didn't know was that it was Hyuga Hiashi that prevented Hinata from becoming a servant of the main house. She revealed. Her banishment, the blonde whispered, surprised. Exactly, Anko said, nodding. Hiashi was against his daughter becoming a branch member and was secretly making plans with Kurinai to adopt Hinata. I didn't know that. Naruto said softly. Anko gave him a smile that doesn't surprise me, Hiashi actually wanted to keep it all a secret, but you deserve to know. The only other people that knew about it are those two old goats, Saratobi Hiraz and Hiashi, Kurinai, Hinata and me. Hinata knows. Naruto said surprised. Yet, that day the doctor told Hiashi about Hinata's improved returning, and he immediately handed her over to Kurinai. She told them. If the elders found out that Hinata's Tsukigan surpassed their own by Akugan, they would use her as a reproducing machine, and Hiashi not about to let that happen. Naruto felt slightly ashamed, all this time I pictured Hiashi as this cold uncaring bad guy, when he was actually trying to protect Hinata-chan. You weren't the only one she chuckled nervously. I also thought he didn't care for his daughters, but I was wrong. He isn't as heartless as I thought he was. They both laughed at that comment. Anko stood up with a smile and stretched a hand out to him. You have a long day of training ahead of you tomorrow, so let's get a good night's rest. She said. Naruto nodded and allowed her to pull him up, and together they returned to their own tent. Flashback continue, unknown location. An unconscious Naruto floated in front of a giant cage completely covered in a sphere of orange chakra. His body was covered with burn marks and deep cuts that were slowly healing. We came menacing voice growled. Why am I trapped in such a tiny, weak human being behind the bars two slitted red glowing eyes opened. If it wasn't for this seal I would have devoured this bag of flesh already. But if I want to live he has to stay alive curse that yandame and the seal that binds me to this, brat. It grumbled in annoyance. And his gaze moved past his host in the chakra bubble towards the dark passage that led towards his location. Show yourself he roared. The sound of soft footsteps reached his ear. My grumpy aren't we said a feminine voice just as an unknown woman stepped into his view. She had long silver hair, baby blue eyes and a pale skin tone. She was dressed in a pure white kimono with long wide sleeves that had blue circles sewed at the end and covered both her hands. A long silver sash was wrapped around her waistline and the ends hung loosely behind her. Who are you Kaiubi growled asked, narrowing his eyes at the silver haired woman. And why do I sense part of me and the others in you? thought. I'm part of you Kurama Kundachi answered with a smile. 